At the turn of the 19th century, the Great Qing is, I guess you could say, a great nation. <laughs> Ah, that's a horrible intro right there. Let's just get into it. Play some chink today. We're gonna have some fun and we're gonna make this nation the strongest in the game. Make sure our people are not impoverished. So we're gonna improve their working conditions and their everything conditions. Plus, we're gonna reestablish our domination in Asia. Make sure that everybody knows they're not supposed to mess with the ching or they're gonna have to pay for it if they do. Now, we do start with a fragile unity. Essentially, this journal entry here should shows how the Qing were extremely weak at the turn of the century and how they were basically split apart and fractions of them were taken by various uh, colonial nations in various wars like the Opium Wars which the British, you know, the British did what the British always do and then later on towards the end of the century the War of the Eight Nations or Eight Pole, I don't even remember the name. My point is we're gonna prevent all that and we're gonna make Qing great again, okay? Let's start it off by researching stock exchange and after we're gonna go for mandatory service since we need to get those line infantrymen because our starting units are irregular infantry and that means everybody can kick our asses right now. We also have only six iron mines compared to 86 silk plantations. So agriculturally, we're not that bad, but we do need to start building more mines, especially coal mines. So let's go with the coal mines and then uh, doesn't matter really. There's so much population in this country that you don't need to worry about not having pop to fill up your factories or farms or whatever. We're also changing to harvesting tools, but remember that we also need tools to harvest. We'll build these tooling workshops a bit later on because we do start with four. We do, however, need to build food industries since we don't have any food industries. And you know, people kind of need food to survive. And let's also change to iron frame building. It means that it's going to take up a lot of iron and tools to build up stuff now. So we're going to need to import some extra iron and tools. Let's go import Russian, Spanish, and British iron. Sounds good to me. Opium is ravaging the Great Qing. Vast numbers of Han people have become opium fiends, causing a wave of crime, poverty, and idleness. Despite the obvious harm, Great Britain continues to flood the market with opium. We need to do something. Opium crisis added to the journal, and we get the opium wars starting. Or we cannot risk the ire of the Great British, and we get the opium addiction with no opium wars. Let's go with the opium wars. We gotta get those Brits to stop giving our people opium, okay? We know it's delicious, we know we enjoy it, but we have to stop it. Holy snap, boys. Look at the insufficient taxation problems that we have here. Oh my god, Sujhu, I'm getting basically minus 82% tax collection. And Shandong, I'm getting minus 86 tax Oh god. It's gonna take me half of the game just to make sure I got enough taxation capacity to collect from these provinces, isn't it? Apparently, we cannot enact almost anything. The only one available here is the dedicated police force. We're gonna go for that now. And afterwards, we're gonna also try and get some of the other laws enacted by reforming our government. Looks like the rural folk do not like us. Minus nine happiness. Oh boy, this is really not great. Wow, we actually have 50% success chance on the dedicated police force. Let's also construct a few more construction sectors. Let's go up to, say, 15 in Beijing. And we just got the police force. All right, that's not surprising since it was 50%. Monument to the Emperor, thank you very much for the extra three prestige. Oh my freaking god, minus 1,800 bureaucracy from enacting the dedicated police force. Are you shitting me right now? So apparently, because of the amount of population that we have, every institution costs a massive amount of bureaucracy. This is a problem. I need to start building a ton of government administration buildings. Forgot to also give out my consumption taxes, so let's go with services. Liquor, obviously opium. If you're gonna be addicted, you might as well pay the tax for being addicted. And even tea, because everybody drinks tea, so we're gonna get money from everybody for drinking tea. Nothing in this world is free is what I'm trying to say here. I've started queuing up a lot of things now since I need to ramp up my production. I got paper mills, iron mines, logging camps, coal mines. I'm trying to get a little bit of everything. I even built one arms factory. So around 1842 or so, I'm gonna start ramping up my iron and coal production massively i want to be the world's greatest producer of coal and iron to stomp out any competition on the world market essentially sell everybody my cheap products so they have to buy it we lost 
33 million radicals from simply enacting migration control. A lot of people were pissed about migration and now we're fixed it so everyone's happy. Why have food when you can have migration control? That good old Chinese saying, am I right? We still have massive bureaucracy issues though so we're building more admin buildings. It's, it's gonna take a while before we fix the situation. I'm also gonna queue up a ton of farms to make sure people have cheap affordable wheat so they don't starve. Remember that if you shift click on a province you queue up five buildings at the same time. We also managed to get line infantry so let's change our units here to line as well as mobile artillery and also change line for our conscription centers. It is gonna tank our economy minus 60,000 because we need to start buying up goods to actually give our units the proper rifles and such. So because of that I am gonna prioritize building our arms factories so I'm gonna alt click on a province which brings it to the front of the queue and I'm gonna build say 10 arms factories in Shedong. I love seeing my radicals going down and my loyalists going up this is so delicious bro did I just say delicious what's wrong with me man import some of that juicy artillery pieces mm. oh guns give give guns oh my god dude you seriously gambling right now this is not the moment to be gambling broski I don't even know what the schnapps is happening anymore more. Hey, we had a successful gamble. All right, so 25% extra interest group for scholar officials. That is not good. I'm gonna go for the authority for a few years at least. I don't want my only interest group to have even more power, okay? Let's also build up a couple of uh, extra admin buildings all around the coastline since all of these states have a ton of population and very little control over who pays taxes or not. Oh my god, this is the first event I get in which I get plus standard of living and not minus standard of living. Hallelujah. To get some tooling done in Nanjing now. Say 20 tooling workshops. Say this. This is what I'm talking about here, boys. Minus two standard of living event once more. I get this event like every five seconds, man. I'm gonna max out all of these uh, lumber mills too now. Let's become the world's greatest producer of a lumber. Oh, finally, we can start researching central archives. Taxation capacity increase is gonna be of super huge help. Kind of a bummer that we don't have many coastal provinces so we cannot really have too many docks right now we're gonna need to get more islands i guess so we should be going colonial for that but i don't want to get a second institution just yet because i just fixed my bureaucracy problems i don't want to get again minus 3,000 bureaucracy hey guess what we just got a cyclone which means we gotta spend 27,000 pounds to fix the situation great day for the chinese government isn't it well, Qing government, I guess. Also, because we have super low market access, I decided to change my technology and research railways first before researching the taxation capacity. It's worth it because we need to fix the market access issues that we have in quite a few of our provinces first. Hold up a second. Did I just see the Americans winning the big war against the Mexicans? Ooh, that is interesting. That's one of the first times I see the US actually taking more than just one state from the Mexicans. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not perfect yet, but it's a an improvement that's for sure queued up another 30 iron mines since iron is vital for constructing everything so you know we kind of need it and now that i've basically stabilized my country a little bit and i have line infantry i'm gonna start puppeting nations to expand my sphere of influence i'm also gonna be damaging my relations with the koreans which uh, are right now at the start my tributary in the hopes that i'll be able to annex them maybe if i damage relations 41 infamy to make uh, the burmans my vassal totally worth it now let's just hope that nobody's gonna actually support them let's see what this is looking like feel like we might have to fight the british because of uh, you know the british owning everything around burma so let's see oh vietnam's supporting them okay interesting let me start mobilizing my boys in that case and we have gotten the railway let's go ahead and build a few railways in the provinces that have issues with market access first we're not gonna build too many around the entirety of the country it's useless right now since we are not focusing on building in every single province let's go with the cheeky invasion in here Jung Fege, go ahead and uh, kill him off please and we're winning because we do have a line infantry compared to their I guess irregular oh no they also have line infantry wow that is quite surprising let me make sure I promote my generals in case you guys didn't know promoting generals is extremely powerful it gives them a lot of bonuses so you want to have higher
higher level generals, the higher the better whenever you're um, fighting in your wars. So let's make everybody level 4 for now. Quickly pushing through Burma, quickly pushing through Vietnam. And I've also added as my war goals, banning slavery in all of these states. So I'm the good guy in this war, okay? Looks like our front line in the south, the naval invasion was successful also. So we can uh, win this war a lot faster now. Cambodia is out, Vietnam is almost out. And there you go, boys. Die Vietnam has banned slavery all because of us. Next up is Burma and they're ours. Nice. I did this because a lot of the times what happens is the English vassalize uh, or add Burma to the customs union. So I want to get them before the British do essentially. Oh, wow. We got a Hindustani rebellion in the Indian lands. I guess people are not happy with their British overlords, are they? Siam wants to be my ally. Um, You know what? Sure. I'll get an alliance with CM. Sometimes, guys, it's really worth it going through your market and checking which goods you should prioritize for selling and which you should keep on your domestic market. So right now, if we prioritize to keep sugar on our domestic market, we get 900. If we sell it, we lose more money. Similar for every good here, you can check and you can see what the difference is going to be between prioritizing selling or keeping on the market. You should definitely do this every few years because this will fluctuate and basically sometimes you want to keep sometimes you want to sell certain goods it's completely random so take your time and do this for example opium literally gave me an extra 40,000 I would have lost that 40k if I kept the opium on my domestic market another thing to note is that because Ming has such a huge amount of population it's not worth it changing to rail transportation the only thing that rail transportation does as a production method is basically it takes less laborers so it frees up population for you to use that population in other fields like you know actually manufacturing trade goods but because we have so much population we don't need rail transportation as consequence if we employ all of those people then i guess we will need the rail transportation after we employ them right but that's never gonna happen in this game kind of funny how ching essentially is a manchu culture nation right because they originate from manchuria from this area but the majority of the people are still han and the han population which is 304 million strong is growing even more by the month whilst the primary culture of Manchu despite being the actual primary culture it's growing a lot less and historically speaking Manchu pretty much faded out with the modern Manchu being very limited to certain areas of the northern bits of China whilst Han Chinese the primary culture in China dominating everywhere everybody speaks Mandarin and identifies as Han Chinese in modern China well most people do anyway minorities decreasing in size by the year my main goal i guess with this playthrough is to become the country everybody relies on when they need a certain good and then whenever i'm pissed at them i blockade them and destroy their economy essentially abolishing serfdom is going to help us a lot actually but we might have issues with the scholar officials since they're pretty pretty much against this all right so it seems like because i decreased the relations with the joseon i can now make them my vassal it does mean that I'm gonna have to go to war with them for that and the Portuguese are gonna defend them with their good old seven battalions I'm gonna add a nice war goal in that case um, to take Guangdong treaty port from the Portuguese so I'm taking back my lands essentially in Macau two wins for the price of one my boys two wins for the price of one. Oh, what they accepted my treaty no <laughs> This was my secret way of getting Macau back. Now I have to actually declare on the Portuguese. Bro, what? I wouldn't need to fight that many nations, to be fair. Uh, maybe I should do that. Let's go, boys. Let me add a few extra war goals since I'm at it. Take other treaty ports. Shelby from Sindh. Oh, that is not a bad idea. Since I only have 10 infamy right now, I can even take some states around. Like, say, uh, take the entirety of uh, Dai Vietnam or whatever it's called. Yep, that's right. I'm gonna vassalize Vietnam. Why not? Since we're at it, might as well, right? And of course, everything I just did was for nothing because the Portuguese simply gave me Macau without a fight. Come on, game. Come on. <laughs> I was pumped up to get the Vietnamese as a vassal for Schnapple Dupski. All right, I'm gonna do a proper vassalization war against Vietnam. Let's go with this. Directly attack the Vietnamese to make him my little popple, mopple, double, double. And uh, I'll stop inventing new words at some point in the future, I promise. 
This is one of the last times I'm, I'm inventing new words. Oh my god, I'm re-establishing the tributary system from EU4, guys. I think I'm also ready, boys. I'm gonna be banning the opium trade. It's gonna ruin my authority, and it's gonna potentially destroy my country. But, um... It's gotta be done, boys. It's gotta be done. And let's uh, pray that we don't collapse, shall we? We gotta survive for five years with the opium crisis and still be intact. I obviously intentionally waited before I took the ban on opium decision because if you take that at the beginning of the game, very likely what's gonna happen is you're gonna collapse and die off as a, a nation despite being this size because of internal problems. But because we've stabilized our internal problems quite a little bit, we've got a strong economy going for us. We actually have 46 million gold reserves and we're getting a ton of money even though we are on medium taxation and we're even paying for our government extra money to get the approval from the Liberati and the Petite Bourgeoisie. So hopefully we get through the opium crisis fairly easy in this playthrough. Holy schnapps, just check the cultural map mode. That is insane, dude. Most of the country is Han, but when you look at it, it's like only restricted to certain areas. It's not the entirety of the actual landmass. That's insane to think about that just a specific area has such a huge concentration of people. Luckily, we can also domestically produce dye and I say luckily because, well, dye is one of the most important goods in this game. So we're gonna build an extra 50 dye plantations for the time being in the south and we'll upgrade this to a lot more as we go along. We also just unlocked nitroglycerin so let's make sure all of our farms use nitroglycerin as a production method. It will considerably increase the amount of goods that we produce from these particular mines. And because we've also grown so much in strength let's uh, get an extra 50 construction sectors. That's right I'm gonna go full bowls here and I'm gonna start producing a lot lot more than before. The initial phase, I didn't want to produce too much for two reasons, because I didn't want to scare you guys with the amount of awesomeness this country has. No, not really. The main reason is because your economy at the start is quite fragile, and if you build too many construction sectors, there is the chance that you will completely collapse your nation when you're simply not looking at the screen for a few moments, because you're building way too many buildings at once, and you don't have the economy to sustain it. It happens. I've had that happen to me, okay? I'm trying to avoid it. Maybe it's just me being scared. I don't know. But hey, there you go, boys. We got serfdom abolished as well. Nice. And check out our production now. 320 out of 320. Beauty fail, my boys. But like I was saying, look at my economy now as well. Mine is 204,000 because we're using 240 for constructing stuff, meaning we need to build more iron mines again. About time we got the condensing engine pump. It's going to increase our coal production, iron, lead, and sulfur production, and gold production by a ton considering that we're using so much iron and coal and lead especially even sulfur actually because we need it for the paper mills well it's gonna be of huge help and speaking of the paper mills we can change to the water to boiler but we don't need to because we have a lot of laborers what this does is it lowers the amount of laborers used and it consumes more coal and tools. We don't want to consume more coal and tools since we barely have enough of it as it is. And we also have more than enough laborers. So even though we could, we should not change to that production method. We also went for agrarianism, which means we now can subsidize a lot of plantations. And we also get a lot more aristocrats from the investment pool. But most importantly, we did it so we increase our taxation capacity a little bit. And speaking of taxation capacity. Let's actually change our government administration to the standardized filing system. That's going to fix a lot of issues, but it does mean that we're going to need to build more paper mills now since paper is going to be in super high demand. I like it how we have 37 million loyalists and only 3 million radicals. We're clearly doing something good, right? I really want to change to professional armies. I'll try, but the reality is that I got 46% of my um, government opposing it so it's not going to be very easy fingers crossed we get it within the first few ticks otherwise we might even have to cancel it and try again later on the end of addiction we broke the hand dependence on opium through great perseverance not even the machinations of the great powers could prevent us from returning good health and prosperity to great ching our manchu and han people stop being obsessed with opium and we lose the widespread opium addiction modifier that gave us offense and defense 
performance debuff as well as standard of living reduction beautiful my boys look at that so now if we go to culture han we hover over it we have no obsession for the han people and no obsession for the manchu people but it seems like the ue are still obsessed with tea which is okay tea is fine it's not a drug all right boys kind of pay got to see that the u.s still didn't get the rest of the lands from mexico hopefully that's gonna happen at some point in the nearby future peru bolivia also had a rebellion and we got a peru separate from peru bolivia okay the north german confederation also formed oh sorry north german federation wait what they took tyrol from the austrians uh okay Okay, that's probably the weirdest thing I've seen in a while. The Ottomans seem to be winning against the uh, Egyptians also. They took back some of the lands that the Egyptians had, but not all of the lands. And it seems like it's very quiet in the Persian areas. I might have to go in that area myself and um, ask them if they need some opium. In order to fulfill all of these grand plans, we're gonna need more construction sectors. We're gonna need to build a lot more stuff a lot faster. Oh wow, for real? Volcanic winter relief costs? Really, bro? I'm going up to 120k i have to increase taxation again don't i but yeah let's uh let's build a lot more construction sectors let's go up to 100 construction sectors right now another 145 thousand expenses for five years what oh my god this is not great this this is really i feel like there's a lot of events to cuck on over the ching here not really fair on the bright side we got per capita taxation which means we are getting a significantly higher amount of taxes than we were getting before we managed to offset the 200 000 debuff that we were getting and we're only getting minus 26 now we're paying for the cataclysm earthquake relief krakatoa humanitarian help and the volcanic winter relief so once these go away we got a plus of uh, almost 300 000 so not so bad considering we're not even on the highest taxation bracket yet and by that i mean considering we're not taxing the schnapps out of people hey guys guess what i just forgot to build forgot to build food industries boys the most important thing to make sure my people don't you know starve um uh, i it's just massive brain right now i'm gonna build a hundred food industries right next oh my god look at our balance sheet going up and down up and down it's struggling to keep up with the fires of industry my boys oh we're actually getting progress in the u.s they've basically taken most of the provinces from the mexicans with the exception of colorado i mean i understand why would you even want colorado right time to start annexing our subjects beginning with tibet and boom they gave up without a fight let's do the same for joseon avec le second integration finito let's go with the third actually let me check my infamy right now i'm at 17 i'm good let's go with the third one a little bit pepega that you actually get infamy whenever you integrate your subjects but it is what it is sadly i guess it does kind of make sense right from an international perspective other countries would not be happy with you directly owning another country that was before your puppet that being said i hope that never makes it to eu4 i would hate that to be a feature in eu4 <laughs> hey look at that boys burma's not giving up without a fight good good i was bored of you know everybody accepting my demands without fighting me crush them burmans my boys I think they have the exact same troops as us, don't they? Should probably upgrade my units a little bit too. I have kind of been ignoring that part of my tech group for the time being. Much better now with the annexation of Burma. We're starting to look like a proper, basically, Asia. Oh yeah, boys. We're going to be getting a dynamite in this schnapple dupe. That does mean we have to start building a lot more chemical plants now since we need a lot more explosives. The cool part about integrating Burma is that we can now build a lot of sugar plantations all around the Burmese lands. I've already started building 46 plantations in Burma state itself with another 47 in the Pegu state since sugar is a valuable commodity that we definitely need. And yes, that's right. We just reached 500 billion GDP in 1885. Standard of living, not too bad. 12.8 with our poorest strata at 12.3 and the upper one at 20.5. Considering how we started, I'd say we're pretty darn well off right now i'm also building an extra 100 plus uh, farms around the country to help out and i've also started building cotton and tobacco plantations just in case i get some immigrants from the united states too soon too soon probably too soon considering they still have not outlawed slavery come on america it's 1885 get your schnapps together oh look at those sugar plantations going my boys let's also change to steel frame buildings 
it is going to tank our economy a little bit. We went down to minus 479,000 pounds because it takes us 1 million construction goods. Look at that steel and glass over there going up in price. We need to build a lot of steel and glass factories. That goes without saying now. So let's go to urban. Let's go say 100 glass and 100 steel factories. Let's queue them up. But on the bright side, we are using 1,200 construction right now. So it's going to be a lot faster upgrading all of our industries and getting up to a billion GDP. I am offsetting the uh, construction expenses by increasing the taxes. We went up to a very high taxes temporarily until we managed to fix our steel and glass situation. Also making my play here to basically uh, vassalize and enslave, I mean, uh, liberate, liberate uh, all of the uh, Indo-Chinese lands, including Siam. In order to avoid a revolution, I'm also going to go for landed voting since most of my people want landed voting right now. It means I'm going to lose 100 authority, which is Pepega, but it is what it is. It's the natural process of this game, sadly. Also want to mention that despite the fact that I just researched Steam Donkeys, I am not going to switch on over to this. Like I said before, with the previous production method, I have a lot of laborers. All that this does is it lowers the amount of laborers that I need, and it increases the amount of engine consumption. I'm not producing too many engines, it would be good for me to have those extra engine factories up and running, but I don't want to fire that many people and I don't need to. My economy is absolutely thriving without steam donkeys. Eventually, I will switch to steam donkeys since I plan on a super industrializing this nation. End of the day, I am pretty much right now the world's leading producer of almost every good that I have available within my country to build. By comparison, France is second after us with 467 and the third one is 190. 97 GDP. So let that sink in. The British are producing four times less than us. Or is it 3.2 times? Doesn't matter, okay? The point is that Qing is insanely powerful and it is a lot of fun to play as them since you basically can cuck on over everybody. All it takes for me right now is to embargo a few nations and I destroy their economy since I am the leading producer of iron, coal, and multiple other items. So if you guys enjoyed this run, check out my Brazil run over here. And I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers. I would not be able to do this without all your support. 